Hello, I'm Bobby Galuba with ubatech.com and welcome to my second video on Thursday, March 26th, 2015. Uh, in today's video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create an Excel spreadsheet which you can use to balance your checkbook or your savings account, or excuse me, your checking account or your savings account. And it's fairly simple and it only has a few formulas. So uh, let's start by uh, single left clicking on Start in Windows XP. Then we'll go up to Microsoft Office, Excel 2007, and single left click. That'll open up Excel. Now the first thing we want to do is uh, put our column names in. And I'll show you the column names that I prefer. Uh, the first one I like to type in is check number. So we'll type in check. And then um, to get it down to the next line in the cell, what you want to do is you want to hold down the Alt key and hit the inner key. So that'll take you to the next line in the same cell. And then we'll type the word number. Then we can hit the tab key and it'll take us to cell B2. All right. Then I'll type date. I'll hit the tab key. I'll type time. Hit the tab key. Type description. Then hit the tab key. I'll type confirmed, which I like to have this column so that I can put an indication that uh, the uh, transaction has gone through and shown up um, as a record in my bank statement. Okay, so I usually just put yes in this column when it's when it's been confirmed that it's shown up on my bank statement or uh, in my online banking. So we'll tab and go to the next column. The next one will be amount. So that's the amount of a transaction. Uh, the amount of each transaction will go in this column. And then balance. So your current balance after each transaction will go in this column. And then I like to have a, uh, a column for comments. So we'll put comment. And then the last column I like to have is statement period. And if you get paper statements or electronic statements um, in like a PDF file or so, um, usually uh, most banking institutions will um, have a period of time, usually a month's time, that the uh, uh, statement is for. So we'll put uh, statement period as the column name here. And then again, I'm going to hold down the Alt key and press the Enter key to get to the next line in the cell. And I'll type the word period. Okay, so now what we want to do is I want to uh, make all of these uh, column names bold. So I'm going to hit the left arrow uh, key, then I'm going to hold down the shift key, and actually I'm going to hold down the control key and then the shift key, and then I'm going to hit the left arrow button, and that'll take me all the way to cell A1. And then to make them bold, what I'll do is I'll single left click on B for bold. And then you'll notice all of the uh, column names are now in a bold font. All right. So the next thing I want to do is I want to automatically adjust the width of all of these columns. So if I single left click here, and then if I move my cursor to the dividing line between any of the column headers, and I double left click, it'll automatically adjust the width. Now sometimes for cells which um, have text on multiple lines, it doesn't do it properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it out slightly here. And I could also, um, yeah, actually I'll, I'll drag it out here. And then I'll single left click here. And I can automatically adjust the width of all of them. Or I could just do this one column individually. So I'm going to uh, double left click here between the dividing line between columns I and J. So I'll double left click right now. And that automatically adjusts the width uh, to correspond to the widest entry in that column. Alright, so now what we need to do is we need to format the columns. Now the date and time columns are going to end up needing to be a little bit wider than they are, but let's, let's start 
here in cell B2, and we'll uh, uh, set the format for the date column. So I'm in cell B2. I have that selected. I'm going to hold down the control key. I'm going to hold down the shift key at the same time, and then I'm going to press the down arrow on my keyboard. And that selects from cell B2 all the way down to the very bottom row in column B2. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to single right click. I'm going to single left click on format cells. Then I'm going to single left click on date. And then I like to have uh, the name of the day as part of the uh, information in the date column. So I'm going to click on this format right here. So it's going to have the day, the month, the date, and then the year. And then I'll single left click on the OK button. <clears throat> now we'll go to the time column. I'm going to single left click on column or on cell C2. I'm going to hold down the control key and then I'm going to hold down the shift key at the same time and then I'm going to then I'm going to press the down arrow. I'm going to single right click on the column that I have selected. Then I'm going to single left click on format cells. And then I want to format the time. So I'm going to single left click on time. And then I'm going to single left click on the format for military time, which is what I prefer. But you can set it to whatever you like. So we'll say 1330. And that's going to be the format for military time. So we'll single left click on OK. And then now the time column should be set appropriately. <clears throat> now the next two columns we need to format are the amount and balance columns because those are going to have uh, dollar amounts inside them. So we want a single left click on cell F2, hold down the shift key, hit the right arrow button once, then we want to hold down the control key, hold down the shift key at the same time. So you're holding, you're holding down both the control key and the shift key. Then hit the down arrow. And it's going to select all of the cells from uh, cell F2 and cell G2 all the way down to the bottom row, which is here. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want a single uh, left click on this selected area and again if you click outside the area it's going to select a, a different area so we want a single right click in the selected area single left click on format cells then single left click on currency and then I like to have two decimal places which most people do for dollar amounts then I like to have the dollar sign and then for negative numbers, I like to represent it with a negative sign. I don't like uh, red or numbers in parentheses. I think this uh, makes more sense. Now, accountants may prefer other formats, but this is, this is what I like. So we'll single left click on OK. All right. Then we have the amount and the balance columns properly uh, formatted. All right, so now let's, uh, let's start putting in some information. <clears throat> now, the first thing you want to do is you want to put your um, initial amount uh, in your bank account. So let's say we made a deposit. And uh, let's, let's widen this description column. Again, I single left clicked on the uh, dividing line and I dragged it over uh, to the left here. So we'll say uh, we deposited, we'll say, we'll call it deposit. And we'll say, uh, that the amount was uh, $5,000 we put into our account. Actually, I don't even need to put the dollar sign. I can just type 5000 and then I'll hit the tab key. And if you notice, it's automatically formatted properly with uh, the dollar sign and uh, two decimal places. And so since this is our first uh, deposit, we'll also have to set the balance um, as 5,000. <clears throat> now I could either type 5,000 in there or what I can do is use a little shortcut uh, key sequence. If I hold down the control key and I press the R key, it will take the contents which are in the cell directly to the left and copy it over to the right 
to the cell that you currently have selected. So I'll hold down the control key and I'll press the R key and if you notice it's got a bunch of pound signs here and that just means that the column isn't wide enough to uh, display the information. So what we'll do is we'll single left click on the dividing, or excuse me, double left click on the dividing line between columns G and H. And there we go, we have $5,000. So there's no formula in that cell because that's the, the first um, transaction that we have. All right, and you want to put a deposit because otherwise you won't have any money in your, in your account to spend. So um, now let's also put a date that we deposited the money. And we'll say we deposited that right after Christmas. Say if it was a Christmas present from Santa. And we'll put, uh, we'll put 12, 27, and we'll put 1-4 for the year. You don't have to type out uh, 2014. And then we'll hit the tab key. And then notice it automatically adjusted the width of the column. All right, and it has the day, the month, the date, and the year, just as we had formatted it previously. And then we'll put the time for the deposit as well. We'll say we deposited that at uh, 1.30 in the afternoon. So we'll say, eh, let's say 2.30 in the afternoon, actually. So we'll say 14.30. <clears throat> All right. Then we'll put a comment that says, from Santa. All righty. Now, the next thing we'll do is we'll uh, put in um, a, a charge, okay? And we'll say that on uh, January 1st, we'll say 1-1-15, January 1st of 2015, uh, we had to get our truck towed. So we'll say that was at uh, 2 o'clock in the morning because we got started partying early on... Uh, Actually, no, this would be on New Year's Day. So we were a little wild on uh, New Year's Eve, and we ended up getting towed. And that was uh, Clem's Towing that towed us. So we'll type in Clem's Towing here. And we'll say that cost us $350. All right, now what we want to do is we want to have Excel perform the calculation to determine our current balance. <coughs> and what we'll do is in this cell, we'll type equals, and then we'll click on cell G2, and then we'll type, hold down the shift key, and hit, and uh, press the plus key, and then we'll single left click on cell F3. And then if you see here, we have the formula equals G2 plus F3. So it's gonna take this amount here, and add this amount, which is actually a negative number, so it's going to decrease our balance. So let's hit the enter key and see what the balance is. And if you see, the balance is now $4,650, which makes sense. Let's also adjust this uh, comment column. So we'll double left click on the divider here. Okay. Now let's put a, a few more transactions in there. Uh, we'll say. Uh, on uh, February 2nd at uh, 3.15 in the afternoon. So that would be 15.15. Uh, 15. We went to uh, Pablo's Pizza. We had a late lunch. All right, and that cost us uh, 12 dollars He had a special for an extra large pizza. All right, well, let's put a few more in there. And we'll say on uh, February, what's, what's that date there? There's a second. We'll say on February 4th, we had to uh, get our plumbing at the house uh, cleared out. So we'll say uh, Roy's uh, router service. We had a little clog in the toilet there, so we had to have Roy clean it out. And Roy's pretty expensive, so we'll say uh, $578.69. All right. And then, let's see, on the following Friday, it was payday. So we'll put a deposit. 
So let's see, that would be the sixth. So we'll say two, six, one, five. And we'll say we went to the bank and deposited that at, say, uh, 12.45 after we ate lunch. And we'll say paycheck. Actually, if you notice here, let's do that again. If I hit the P, it tries to guess um, what I want to type in there. So it puts in the value, or it puts in a value that starts with P that I had typed in previously. If you notice, I typed in Pablo's Pizza up here, so it's wanting to put the same thing in this column, or excuse me, in this cell, but I don't really want to put that in, in there because I didn't buy anything from Pablo's Pizza again, but if I had, I could, I could just hit the enter key, and it would put in Pablo's Pizza for me, and I wouldn't have to type the whole thing in. <clears throat> but we want to put paycheck 1. So that'll be our first paycheck from our new job. And we're getting paid pretty well, so we'll say... Uh, three thousand dollars all right <clears throat> now what we need to do is we need to figure out what our current balance is so what I could do is I could single left click here on this little tiny square at the bottom right hand corner of this rectangle that's around cell G3 but a quicker way uh, to uh, get the calculation to propagate all the way down is to double left click right here when I have a small solid black cross so let's double left click <clears throat> and if you see the calculation has propagated all the way down to our last row alright and you can look up here and you can see how it's making the calculation and as I go down it's incrementing those values so say for this cell it's taking the balance here in cell G4 and subtracting this charge from Roy's router service of 578.69 in cell F5. And the reason why it's subtracting it is because there's a negative sign there. Even though there's a plus sign there, we're adding a negative value to a positive value, and that's decreasing our balance. And then when we make the deposit, the uh, balance of our checking account goes up. All right? So say there was a uh, check that we forgot to uh, put in there that we wrote. And that was our first check. And uh, we'll put it in here. Actually, let's put it in here. So, wait a minute. What I want to do is I want to hover over this uh, beginning of row 4. I want to single right click. And then I want to single left click on insert. Alright. And I'm going to single actually let's go to the check number column and we'll call it check number one since that's our first check all right and then we wrote this on say January 16th so we'll say 1 16 2015 and we'll tab over and you don't need to put a time because it was just a check and we'll say that we wrote that to uh, Billy Bob's tree service All right, and Billy Bob, he ain't cheap either. It cost five hundred dollars just to cut down one rotten tree. All right, now we have a gap here in our balance, though. So what we need to do is we need to click on the cell directly above it, which already has a calculation in there, and we want to hover over this and then drag it down to the next cell that has a calculation and then it'll propagate all the way down to the bottom so I let go and now the balance at the bottom has been recalculated and all of the balances in between as well alright so the last thing you want to do that I'll show you here <coughs> is typically you want to put uh, the statement period and like on uh, my bank statements uh, say this is uh, for December 27th um, my typical statement would probably be say we'll say 12 uh, four t we'll say 12 15 2014 through we'll say 1 14 2015 and actually we'll double 
left click on that to adjust we'll double left click here between the dividing line or on the dividing line between columns I and J and then it'll adjust automatically adjust the width of the column okay now let's see these two transactions or this transaction here on January 1st was also in that statement period and we'll, and we'll assume that it came through um, during that statement period as well so instead of uh, having to type all this in again what I can do is I can single left click in the cell or actually I already have the cell selected cell I2 or excuse me cell I3 and what I'm gonna do is uh, to get the contents of the cell just above to copy down into the cell that I currently have selected I'm gonna hold down the control key and press the single quote key or I actually I should say the apostrophe key which is just to the left of the inner key on most keyboards and then we'll hit the inner key and there we go we have the same <coughs> we have the same statement period there all right and we'll say that these transactions were uh, on our statement for 1 15 2015 through 2 14 2015 and we'll hit the inner key hold down the control key press the apostrophe key hit the inner key control key apostrophe key or actually hold down the control key and press the apostrophe key at the same time hit the inner key then once more we'll uh, hold down the control key press the apostrophe key and then hit the inner key then we'll assume that all of these transactions have shown up on our statements and what we can do is I like to put uh, the word yes in this column and you can put whatever you like. You can put uh, the letter X or whatever is good for you. And then instead of typing yes in each one, all I have to do is hit the Y key, and it automatically tries to guess what I'm want to type. So I see that it's going to put yes, and it's going to put it in the same case that you had typed it in initially, even though it shows a lowercase Y. Once I hit the inner key, you'll see that it makes it uh, an uppercase Y. So I'll hit the inner key, and there we have yes again. So we'll hit Y, enter, Y, enter, Y, enter, and then Y, enter. So we've confirmed that all of these transactions have shown up on our bank statement or uh, in our online banking. <coughs> and we have our balance here. Now another thing that I like to do uh, for um, transactions that are transactions that I can use for um, writing off on my taxes is I'll put um, a little comment in here and let's see save for Roy's router service that was that was for my house so I'll write that off my taxes and we'll say recorded for taxes and you can put whatever other comments you prefer in there as well so that's it that's a, a good way to use Excel uh, to balance your checkbook or your um, savings account and actually what we want to do here let's name the sheet let's double left click on sheet one down here we'll type checking account I like to leave out the spaces and then just put a capital letter for each word because that uh, it, it's limited in how many characters you can type for the sheet name <clears throat> and then what we'll do is we'll save it we will single left click on the office button go to save as single left click on Excel workbook and we'll save it in my documents and we'll highlight the title book one and we'll call it account ledgers and you can name it um, you can give it whatever file name you prefer but I like account ledgers so we'll single left click on save and then now it'll be in your My Documents folder. So I hope you uh, uh, learned something, and thank you very much for watching. Take care.